Hey guys, it's Puxbro. Welcome back to another video. Today in Fallout 76, I'm going to be talking about how to get the Goss minigun and how to get all of the mods for it. And we're going to talk a little bit about what mods I think are the best for the Goss minigun and what legendary effects that you might want to look out for. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to go ahead and talk about is how to actually get the Goss minigun itself. And in order to get the Goss minigun, you're going to have to grind out your Raider reputation after doing the main One Way Wastelanders questline. Once you have the ability to get gold boolean from the One Way Slanders questline, and then you can go ahead and start grinding out your Raider reputation. And I'll go ahead and show you if you hit the menu button and then you go to social, you can see your Raider reputation or your reputation statuses in the corner here and as you can see I am ally with the raiders and ally is the highest tier of reputation so essentially you have to be ally in order to unlock access to the plan for the uh, goss minigun and i'll have a video in the description if you're interested in how to get raider reputation i'll have a guide there for you but once you have your raider, raider reputation maxed out just to demonstrate you want to go ahead and go to crater and once you're here navigate to the core and then once you go into the core we're gonna go ahead and go to the left right here and there's gonna be a mort mortimer mort mort timer <laughs> and you can go ahead and trade gold boolean and this is where you'll be able to get all of the goss minigun plans the plan to craft the gun itself and then to actually get the mods and attachments so this is going to be a weapon that's similar to the plasma caster in a sense where you have to use legendary modules to craft it and then you'll be able to get a random legendary variant but before i go into that i'll go ahead and talk about the mods itself and the gold boolean costs for each of the mods i'll have all of this information in the description as well but i'm going to go ahead and briefly go over it in the video so the plan for the Goss minigun itself is going to be 750 gold boolean and to put that into perspective you are going to only be able to redeem 200 uh, gold boolean a day and you can buy 300 gold boolean once a week. Um, and if you're interested in gold boolean I'll have a guide to that in the description as well. Uh, but yeah, so the base plan is 750 and then we have all of these attachments that you guys can see right here. So we have the Goss minigun gunner sights. So this is just the, this is pretty much a ring sight or a, I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what this is like. I'll go ahead and buy this one. And then there is the Goss minigun pent-up barrel, the triple barrel, and those are the, gonna be the two barrel attachments, each of them being 150 gold bullion. Um, and then there's gonna be the Tesla capacitor, the Tesla dynamo, and the minigun capacitor. Um, prime Goss minigun capacitor. So those three are gonna be the um, different, I guess like damage type. So usually like you can put a prime receiver in your gun and it'll kind of change like the ammo or it'll change like the damage in some way. So those three are gonna fall under that category. Um, and you can see that the Tesla capacitor is gonna be 100 gold bullion. The minigun Tesla dynamo is 100 gold bullion and the capacitor is 200 gold bullion. Um, so let's just go ahead and go over the differences of all of these mods really quick. So first with the barrels, the minigun triple barrel is gonna increase the fire rate, but it's gonna be sacrifice range and accuracy. The penta barrel is gonna give you even more fire rate, but even less, uh, range and accuracy, and it's also going to reduce the damage. So I use this website, link will be in the description, and it kind of gives you a estimate of some damage numbers and damage comparisons, and this is updated to the One Wasteland for the most part. Um, so we'll go ahead and compare the Goss miniguns to a Goss minigun, and you can see right here, we'll have the Tri Barrel, and we'll be comparing it to the Penta Barrel. And so essentially what is going to happen when you have these two barrels is you'll get slightly less per hit damage Damage with the penta barrel but you're gonna have a significantly higher attack speed as you can see here um, but overall the DPS is actually still gonna be higher on the tri barrel and you're also not gonna be burning through as much ammo yeah so honestly there's really no point to use the penta barrel um, because it reduces the damage so much that the attack speed doesn't really matter as much because your overall dps is still lower than when you're using the tri barrel now that we know that the tri barrel is better than the pencil barrel i'll go ahead and compare the tri barrel to the standard barrel 
right here we have 57.5 to 57.5 and we have 9.10 versus 10.92 so it's a slight increase in attack speed about about two hits per second extra and that extra damage of two hits per second increases the dps by almost 100 so you can see that the tri barrel is actually going to be the best barrel attachment in terms of dps and it is the one that i would recommend now let's go ahead and talk about the actual like tesla or like this mod slot which is going to be the pretty much like the firing type or like the ammo type so we'll put both of these back onto try now that we know that try is the best barrel and then we'll go ahead and compare prime and the dynamo so between these different types of capacitors dynamo essentially adds electrical damage and it has a better ammo capacity uh, this one the tesla capacitor adds better electrical damage and improves reload speed and ammo capacity and then we have the um the actual prime goss minigun capacitor which is superior damage and bonus damage to scorched beasts and scorched so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual damage numbers so right here we have the dynamo compared to the prime so this one will give you superior ammo and a little bit of electrical or energy damage and we can actually see that right here so the energy damage is actually only about three where at, and uh, you actually do a sacrifice a bit of ballistic damage quite a bit of ballistic damage so overall, if you add up these damages, um, the ballistic number and the energy number, it's still going to be less than this number. But so your total DPS that you're going to be dealing with the dynamo um, attachment with a tri barrel is going to be 660 da uh, damage per second, 660.66. Um, and 32 of that, you know, being energy and then the rest of it being ballistic, whereas you're doing 764 just ballistic um, using just the, the prime um, barrel. So prime in terms of DPS is going to be superior, um, but it's kind of up to you if you value the superior ammo capacity in exchange for damage. And then in and then we're going to go ahead and compare the capacitor. And so this one is going to give you superior energy damage with less ammo capacity. So you're not gonna get as much as the dynamo capacity. So with this one, you're getting 693 damage point, 693.42 damage per second. Um, and you know, with the prime capacitor, you're still getting 764.4. So the difference is a little bit less, but overall, the if you're looking at purely just DPS, the prime ammo is still gonna be better. So my recommendation for maximizing DPS is going to be a tri barrel with a prime uh, capacitor. If you're interested in having superior ammo capacity, then go with the dynamo and you can have better ammo capacity, but um, you know, you are going to be sacrificing damage. If you're interested in having a little bit more increased capacity, but not superior, um, then go with the capacitor. That's like your good in between, uh, in between prime and dynamo. But overall, you know, Generally speaking, prime ammo is easier to craft. It will weigh more for uh, this ammo type, but you are going to be getting the good damage. And over here on the wiki page, we can see some extra details right here. So pretty much it, this, you know, if you use the prime capacitor, you're going to be using ultra sight ammo. It's going to add, you know, more damage than the other types. Um, so if you're looking for pure DPS, prime capacitor is the way. If you're interested in the Tesla coil capacitor, you can see you get some reload speed, you get magazine capacity, and decent amount of damage. So honestly, that one is not too bad. And then if you get the Dynamo one, then you're going to get only a little bit extra damage, uh, a lot more magazine capacity, but you actually get slower reload speed. So this is just a quick breakdown, and I'll have this link in the description as well. Um, but yeah, so those are all your options. Um, overall for DPS, I am personally going to be doing a tri-barrel prime capacitor. And so right here, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the prime Gauss minigun capacitor for 200 gold bullion. And then I'm going to go ahead and also go for the uh, tri-barrel, which is going to be this one right here. So now that we talked about the mods and which ones I think are best for DPS and pretty much all your options of what, you know, once you select the ones that you want, we can go ahead and now talk about crafting the actual gun and applying the mods. So let's go to my camp.
All right, so in order to craft this weapon, we're going to have to have a couple requirements, which, which I'll go ahead and go over right now. And we're going to need a weapons workbench. So let's begin crafting. And once you're in the crafting menu, uh, the Gauss minigun, like once you've learned the plans, is going to be under energy guns. And then right here, you can see the Gauss minigun. We're going to need the science perks. We're also going to need all of these materials here. And we're going to need legendary modules. And I would like to mention that in order to get a good legendary roll, you're probably going to have to craft quite a few Goss miniguns unless you get really lucky, you know, due to RNG. So you're going to need all of these materials and like a decent amount of them so that you can keep crafting multiple Goss miniguns over and over until you get one that you like. I would recommend holding off on applying any attachments until you get a Goss minigun with the legendary rolls that you actually like. That way you can save a bit on resources. If you need help getting any of these materials, feel free to leave a comment and I can go ahead and link you one of my junk materials material guides and then I'll go ahead and also link a legendary script guide in the description that way if you need information on how to get legendary modules you can go ahead and find out there but essentially you exchange legendary script at the purveyor in the ash heap with uh to buy legendary modules and then once you get enough legendary modules you can use that to craft certain weapons in the game um and you know, just in case you're not sure, the purveyor is down in the bottom left of the map. This is the ash heap, and this is where the purveyor is at the rusty pick. Um, but I've already stocked up on a bunch of these modules, so let's go ahead and get crafting. All right, so I have put on the proper perks, and so you just need science rank one, and, but I already have the perk cards maxed out just so that I can craft this with the best efficiency. So let's craft the Goss minigun. And you can see all the materials it's gonna use up. And once you make it, um, I honestly wish it would like pop up on screen because you have to actually leave the menu and then go into your inventory in order to see what legendary effects it rolled with. But luckily we have a nice tab called new now. So every time you craft it, you're gonna get 200 two millimeter or two mm electronomagnetic cartridges. Um, and then right here you can see we got a junkies goss minigun at the two star rating so while crafting you can get anywhere between a one to two to three star rating and it can be you know any legendary effects that corresponds with the star rating so this is a junkies one and to see the full effects i'm gonna go ahead and hit inspect and then that way we can see the second one so this is a 25 percent faster fire rate a junkies goss minigun this minigun is actually really, really good for a junkies build. Um, I'm not a junkies build, so you know I can't benefit from this. But if you were a junkies build, you know, like 25% faster fire rate right there is a very good roll for DPS. If we look over here at the damage kind of comparison, let's say we're both using uh, Try and Prime, and right here we have the 25% increased fire rate. You can see how, just how much the DPS increases. You get like two, almost 200 DPS increase. Um, and let's just say you wanted to not even use the Try Barrel so that you could have that extra range. Um, your DPS would still surpass a Try Barrel Goss minigun. So 25% increased fire rate is going to be really, really good for the major effect. Um, obviously, you can't get explosive on these weapons because they already have a mini explosive effect. So yes, yeah, so 25% right here is the best. Um, and then for prefixes, um, I would say the best is bloodied if you're a bloodied build, um, junkies if you're a junkies build, or, or anti-armor, or maybe even two-shot. I think those would probably be the best in my opinion. The other ones can be good in some cases, but I think anti-armor is generally a really, really good one, and a uh, two-shot is also not too bad. So now that I've gone over the legendary effects that I think are pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and craft a couple of these right now for myself. That way you guys can kind of see how good the RNG is, and also maybe I'll get a good one. And just wanted to mention that I'm using all the science perks, and this is pretty much what they give you. So they cost fewer materials and it's going to go ahead and have improved durability. So make sure you're using all these science perks. I always like to craft them one at a time just so that I don't have to craft any extra in case I get a good one. But right here you can see I got a one star this time, just a berserkers. I do want to mention that the glass minigun is not a tradable item. Uh, so you can't drop it, you can't trade it. And this usually applies to all items that have to do with gold bullion. So right here, I got a Vampire's Goss minigun. Let me look at the secondary effect. 
inspect. So we have Vampire's Goss Minigun with 50% limb damage. So the secondary effect isn't very good, but the Vampire effect is not too bad. This one is a Mutant Slayer's Goss Minigun. And it's a one-star anti-armor Goss Minigun. So honestly, not the worst, because I, I do personally like anti-armor. This is pretty much what it's going to look like without the sight attachment. It's honestly not too bad. Um, I don't think it makes too bad of a difference, but I think the site does actually have a stat benefit. So that's probably why you'd probably want to attach it. So I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with the site. And right here, we can go to modify and I can kind of show you guys all the mods and what it'll cost. So this is the requirements for the tri barrel. You only need science rank one. And this is pretty much all of the junk requirements. I'll have the junk requirements in the description for each of the mods. So depending on what you choose, you can go ahead and look there. Um, I just have the default appearance. And then for the Tesla coil, we can get the prime capacitor. You are going to need flux to craft this capacitor and you're going to need gunsmith five, rank five. So that's another downside to the prime capacitor. But generally speaking for DPS, um, prime capacitors or prime bullets is just superior. It's, it's the way to go for damage most of the time. Um, and then you can have the site right here. This is the gunner site. You only need science rank one. Not too hard on the material so i'll go ahead and attach this so i can show you guys what the site actually looks like so now that we have the site on uh, this is what it looks like in first person and in third person and then when you're actually aiming it this is what it's gonna look like so honestly um i can't say that i like the first person site <laughs> very much uh, obviously in third person you don't even use the actual site so it wouldn't matter too much yeah, so having the gunner sights on will actually give your accuracy. Um, it'll add eight to accuracy and a little bit of weight. If you're wondering why the gun weighs so little, it's because I have a heavy weapon perk to allow me to hold a lot of heavy weapons since I'm a heavy gunner build. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be what the site looks like. And that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Uh, really quickly, I'll do a little showcase of it by killing some enemies with it. Um, in terms of perk cards, I am using some perk cards that will actually make this weapon hit a little bit harder. Alright, so this is usually my perk card setup, and I'll go ahead and talk about everything that directly affects the damage of my gun. So we have Expert Heavy Gunner, Heavy Gunner, and Master Heavy Gunner. This is a 60% damage increase because it is a heavy uh, weapon. Then we have Demolition Expert. This increases the explosive damage of the gun by 60%. Uh, then we have Adrenaline, which gives me 10% max of 60% damage for 30 seconds per kill. Duration refreshes with kills. Um, we also have Tenderizer, which makes your target receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. And then I have Bloody Mess, which gives me a 15% damage bonus. Um, and then I have stabilized which also gives me a 45% armor ignoring and then the gun I'm currently using is another 50% armor ignoring so a total of 95% armor negation. That is pretty much the perk setup that I'm using to maximize the damage on this gun and I'll go ahead and show you guys this weapon hopefully on a tougher a tougher um, enemy so let me find one for you guys. All right, so with all those perk cards in mind that are going to be buffing this gun, we'll go ahead and do a damage test. And we're going to be testing this on a Scorched Queen. This is a level 100 Merlurk Scorched Queen. So in my opinion, the Queen is one of the harder things to fight. Um, I don't know why, but it always just tends to deal so much damage to me. And right there, I guess I would have died, but I just re insta revived. But you can see the DPS right here. Just stim pack. I think it's because the, the acid just does so much damage. Then we can just go ahead and finish her off. And heal before I die again. Yeah, so generally speaking, I think Merlurk Queens are definitely on the harder side to fight just because of how quickly they can kill you um, while also being pretty tanky. So right there, that was kind of like a damage test. You can kind of get a feel for how quick it um, kind of how quick it ended up killing. One thing to, to worry about is, uh, yeah, if you're too close to yourself, the explosive rounds will damage you. So kind of try to keep your distance from enemies. 
it's like shooting at this range can damage you. But I have the perk that reduces explosive damage, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, so here he's it's landed. We can go ahead and see the damage. So I'm doing about 66 per hit with a 99 and a crit. One thing that I do want to also mention in terms of the damage with this weapon is that um, apparently the way explosive weapons work is they're kind of, they're, I would say they're a little bit broken. Um, if you shoot a target and the explosion from your shot does not hit the ground, then apparently your explosive damage will not be counted. So, you know, usually on smaller targets this isn't an issue, but a bigger target like a boss or like the Scorched Beast, um, you won't see these small little explosive damage numbers. And that's just because of how explosive damage is in this game. So that is the one drawback, but for the most part, for everyday mobs, you know, this thing will DPS just fine. Um, but yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any positive or negative feedback, also let me know. That way I can improve. But otherwise, until next time.